Hey YouTube, I'm Artist Rob Reap and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is going to be part two of uh, what we think might be a two to three session painting. So we might finish this painting in this session, we might not, it just depends, but hang with me on that. For all of you first time viewers, if you've never been to my YouTube channel before, um, please be sure and hit that subscribe button and uh, and also that bell icon, you'll, you'll be able to uh, keep up with all of my uploads here on YouTube. I'm excited to have you along with me though. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think of my programs and uh, and the, the painting work that I'm doing, all the stuff that I'm sharing with you guys. I hope you're, I hope it's helpful to you. I hope you're learning something. Uh, I'm doing new types of content each week, whether it be paintings, whether it be uh, painting review, uh, equipment reviews. Um, so I'm going to be adding new stuff each week. Uh, hopefully, that's kind of on my. I haven't been on a regular schedule yet, but we're going to be, we're going to be hopefully getting on that, on that soon. Um, all right. So what do you say? Let's get to painting. We got a dog to finish. German short haired pointer coming up next. Our palette for this second session is going to be the exact same palette that we had for the for the first uh, portion of this painting. We're going to have um, titanium white, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, um, um, yellow, uh, that's cad yellow deep, and cad red deep. Um, and I can't remember if there's another color that we threw in here towards the middle portion of this painting, but I don't believe so. So. Um, that's a pretty very very limited very almost primary palette um, I'm starting off though with with um, just a basic mixture of titanium white a little bit of red and yellow along with um, just a a touch of burnt sienna you know guys I harp on it when I say touch I, I mean a touch it's it's not it doesn't take much oil paint to, to change especially with those stronger colors like the reds and the Mert Siennas, they, they can really uh, they can really spice up <laughs> titanium white pretty quickly. Uh, I'm using a I'm using a different brush though. Uh, this is actually a filbert that I've got going right now uh, for the top portion. We're, we're going to be putting grass in on this painting, but um, the upper third to a half of the of the painting is going to be almost out of focus. Um, so we're going to to try to create that effect within the paint uh, strokes. Uh, in this little area that I'm working on, I'm not as concerned with that, but uh, I'm just I'm right now I'm just covering canvas. But at the same time, I do want to be cognizant of of my paint strokes and and the end product that they're going to to um, to show to the to my audience. Uh, so what I've done in terms of brush selection, I've actually gone in and I found a filbert brush that's pretty soft. I, so it's not a bristle. Uh, I think it's um, it's some sort of cheap, cheap sable that I bought years ago, uh, and I, I find that it's a pretty good one for harsh blending when I need to do really harsh blending and just you know tearing up a brush nearly. So this brush has been put through the ringer already, but uh, all all I'm trying to do is is just get tons of uh, of por large portions of the canvas covered very, very quickly. As I start to work around the edge of this dog, I, I want to um, accomplish a couple of things. As I said in the first session, and for any of our viewers who, who didn't watch the first session, I encourage you to go back and do that. But uh, if you, if you, I'm going to go back over this right now anyway. Part of the reason that I've got to be careful in the stage that I'm at now is if I paint a, just a direct line uh, around the edge of this dog, I'm going to get what's what I call the halo effect. I'm going to end up with this halo looking shape uh, around the outside of the dog because the brush strokes are going to clearly show that. So I've got to be be careful and make sure that I try to pull pull up as many strokes as I can um, and still yet paint around this dog and blend those lines out to the point where it looks blurred. It doesn't look like I've just painted straight around the dog. So you might be wondering, because some other artists might might look at this process and go, well, he's doing it really backwards. You know, the dog needs to go in last, the grass needs to go in first. Um, he's, he's messing this up. That may work for them to paint the, to paint the grass in first. For me, though, I find that, um, that I like to, uh, to paint the, the figure in uh, first, especially in a portrait that, that is this large. That's not always the case, but 
Um, in, a, in this particular piece, this dog is so large in this painting, if I were to paint the grass first, I would end up with brush strokes that would show through the dog. Uh, because when oil paint hardens or oxidizes, uh, essentially it, it just becomes this this really hard uh, material and it holds its its shape extremely well. Uh, and and then I couldn't control the the hair of the dog and which direction it was going because I had I would have grass strokes behind it. Um, without sanding sanding that down, I would have a, a big problem. Uh, so I don't want to say I don't want to have to take the the time to sand it down. Uh, I'm kind of a I'm not a lazy painter, but I don't want to have to go back and sand paint down um, in a situation like this. So uh, it, for me, I'm confident enough in my skills to be able to just paint the dog in first and then and then work, start to work on this grass uh, you can notice i'm changing up a few little sh a few shades of the coloring in different spots that's that's because there's there's shade in this grass in the background there's light hitting it in the background it doesn't all need to be one big block of color uh, i will very well not even very seldom i never use paint straight from the tube uh, I, at least I haven't found a situation where I need to do that yet uh, or would want to. Um, I like having my own little color mixtures. It randomizes the painting uh, quite a bit and allows me to make sure that, that uh, each individual brush stroke is going to be just a, just a little different from, from the previous. Uh, and um, at this point forward in this painting, uh, for the next few minutes at least, I'm just going to be trying to cover tons of canvas with a with a gen general color of, of this tan uh, mixture that I've got going on. As you paint around the dog, uh, some of you may be a bit hesitant to to get inside the lines of the dog itself. Now I'm trying not to do that as it is, but it's inevitably going to happen. The dog's lines around the outside may look like hard lines, but in fact they're very hair-like because they were done with a bristle brush. And and I did sort of fan them out in, in places just to give that that hair effect or that fur effect on the dog. But I do, as I'm working on a different area now, I'm just dropping in some burnt sienna in the in the corner, just to kind of darken up a little bit of an area, just just a little bit. But going back to this 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 part about the lines around the dog, um, if you're, we've got to get the canvas covered. But if you go into this with the expectation that you're going to perfectly paint the grass around this dog without getting any paint in inside the lines of the dog, you're sadly mistaken, and and you're setting yourself up for failure. The best approach to take to this is say, okay, I'm going to try my best to stay to cover the canvas without touching the dog, but it's going to happen. So when I'm done with the grass, I'm just going to go back and touch up the dog. That's the simplest way to handle that problem, and that's what, that's what my plan is for the rest of this painting. I'm working my way down just a little bit further within this this painting into the the lower half. Uh, I do want to start now considering where my grass is going to become more detailed as the focus of effect comes into into play. So instead of uh, instead of worrying about that right side with the bottom, I'm just gonna I'm gonna carry over to the left side uh, where the the um, out of focus effect is still going to be taking place on this left side near the top. So I'm using a similar color. I've got that color already mixed. Again, I'm slightly changing it from time to time, just getting uh, a little bit of, uh, of a random look to it. You can see already we had that, that really strong um, sienna uh, tone, which was what I started with on this, this piece. Uh, this painting's already changing quite a bit uh, just with this 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 simple color and you'll also notice as we start to to really paint a ton of this color in this tan color as we move further near the bottom you're going to notice that the color of the dog is going to 
not change, but it, it will to your eye. It will it will become uh, more of a, a reddish tint that that is so true with the German short-haired pointer that liver color um, that will come more and more into play. Uh, you can see I painted over the ear there just a little bit, so uh, I was a little bummed about that. That was a pretty bad one. I'm, I actually I actually got in, but for for me, you know that's not a that's not a big boo boo. I can I can I can make that work. Um, if you, you if you leave a few detailed brush strokes near the top in this unfocused area, it's not going to be the end of the world. But try to blend most of this near the top uh, if you're going for this this out of focus effect in the upper half of the of the painting. I'm being very careful once again to to try to paint. You can see I'm I'm being careful, but I'm not being that careful. Uh, it's it's careful confidence. So you ha you go quick, and if you get into something, then so be it. But uh, I, I'm I just want to get the canvas covered, and if I have to go over that dog's head just a little bit, I can always go back and retouch that up. Notice I'm taking I'm painting that halo line in, and then uh, I, I'll go back and kind of make sure that, that it looks right. See, I'm kind of going back over, just painting those strokes back up to make sure that the halo effect doesn't happen. I kind of sit back, take a look at it. It's always good to, to get back a little bit from your paintings. Right there, I didn't get too far back, but um, don't don't stay 12 inches from, from a canvas and think that you're going to see what the audience is going to see because it's not going to be anywhere near it, uh, especially with, with a painter like myself. Of course, I... I haven't really gone too too much into depth in the style of art that I do, but this even this dog, even this portrait, while it's a, a bit more detailed, I paint in a form that's really considered impressionistic realism, uh, and and that's what I strive for. Uh, so any of you out there who are who are ultra realism painters, you know my channel my channel may not give you exactly what you're looking for, but this is the style that I paint in. It's what I like, so. You know, it's what I work in, and um, I, I'm still, I'm every day, I'm developing a new, a, a new bit of uh, self-identity within my own art. But you know, hopefully, this will teach you guys that that uh, a big, broad stroke, a big, almost abstract stroke, can really create a a lot of detail, a lot of realism, even even in that, even in big, broad, abstract strokes. Putting a little bit more paint onto my palette. Please notice as you look at this painting without me painting on it for just a second. Notice that everything so far is very blended. It's very um, not muted, but just it's it's not a strong, strong, strong color. I've really got a lot of titanium white in this. But the most important part is I've really I've really worked to make sure that that there's no harsh harsh lines in the upper part of this painting. Just watch how fast I'm going with this. I'm just I'm just throwing it in. But it's not it's it's a it's a controlled chaos. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I've used that term before on this channel, but that's what I like how I describe it to my students in most of my classes. I I paint with controlled chaos. I love how that left side looks already. It's just really beautiful. Time to start kind of working on finishing painting around the dog. Now the awesome part about this painting, um, this guy's in a field, obviously. That's what we're working on. So the bottom part of him, he's this is some tall grass that he's in. The bottom part of this dog is going to be pretty much covered up. Uh, with you can notice, I haven't even painted the right, the bottom part of that that back left leg. If you were in the if you were the dog, his back left leg. It's actually on your right, uh, but I haven't even painted that fully all the way to the bottom of the canvas because I I knew planning in the composition of this piece, I knew there was going to be a ton of grass there, so no worries about it. Just going to make sure that um, make sure that 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 bottom part of his body gets covered up. I don't know if you noticed, I just added a little bit of ultramarine blue. You think, why in the world do you put an ultramarine blue in this thing? Into grass. Well, it's kind of a harvest grass, first of all. But that blue is just gives a really nice little uh, cooling effect to the painting. But it also lends the idea of a 
a little bit of shadow back there, just just a little, uh, and I really liked it. It, it kind of it created a different a different tone that we didn't necessarily have anywhere in this painting except on the far left side of the dog. You can see he's got a bit of a shadow there, and that's got a lot of blue in it. So that kind of connects the the dog to the grass in that area. So it creates a, a, a nice flow. I could get all scientific and say it creates a nice flow. The bottom line is I like the color. It looked good. <laughs> Sometimes we can we can we can overanalyze our art, you know. And and I, I've been around a lot of students who who do that. And I've, I've been around a lot of artists who who tend to think that way. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to make that clear. If you're, if you're a fine art artist and you, and you, you really look for all the little bitty details, like the cooling effect of the blue and the, the, um, the absolute flow of the painting, then yeah, that, that's great. More power to you. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I have one question for most of my students when, when they leave, uh, my, my classroom with, with one of their paintings, does it look good to them? And that's the most important thing, um, you know. I've, I've done, I've sold a lot of paintings in the last in the last year. Uh, I've been very very blessed to be able to to sell art, uh, but I didn't paint a single painting with the absolute intent of painting it for somebody. I painted it for me. I liked it. I think it's the same way for an author. You know, if you're if you're going to write a book, it, you know, I hope you're writing a su subject matter that you enjoy. So if you don't like your art, you know, the, no one else is going to. So just, just ask yourself that very simple question when you finish a painting or even, even a brush stroke. Does it look good to you? Um, now, you have to be careful with that. I do want to, you have to be careful with this, especially as a beginner, because we have this tendency to say, well, it looks good to me because I, I've never done that before. Or it looks good to me because that's what I've always done. Don't get into that cycle of complacency. You need to challenge yourself. You need to take risks uh, and and jump into the into the deep end when you're not really sure what the process is um, in the technical portion of this painting or any painting that you do. You, you just need to challenge yourself to to go beyond what your current skill set is. At this point, this painting is still looking a bit raw, but as we move to the lower half of it and start painting in detailed grass, I have a feeling you're going to like it. I think it's going to come alive to you. I think you're going to really enjoy uh, how this thing works. Now, for some of you guys, if you're working in an area like what I'm working in right now, uh, I'm, I'm still using the same brush I had, uh, and even I messed up a little bit in there, and I'll have to go back and retouch it. But you know, if you feel more comfortable using a liner brush for this, by all means use it. Um, don't until you until you hone your skills enough that you feel like you can be really strong and confident with every stroke. Look at that! I just took out a whole portion of tail. Well, that looked horrible, so I'm gonna have to go back and cover that up. Uh, but hey, you know, the thing a lot early in my painting career that that would have devastated me as a young painter i would have thought oh no oh no oh no no i messed it up i messed up this beautiful tail well guess what i've got a whole tube of burnt sienna over there just waiting and ultramarine blue just waiting to help me cover that up it's not a big deal <laughs> you can always you can always touch it up We're going to darken this color a little bit and start to work on the detailed part of the grass near the bottom. So it's been very simple so far and and this don't don't let this bottom step intimidate you. You can see how really still random I'm going in with this cuz this is just still just a background layer and I'm going to lay a little bit of this dark color near the top and the unfocused portion of the painting just to kind of connect the two uh to have harmony, you know, visual harmony. Uh which maybe we'll do a video on that at some point but uh, I'm just laying in some dark, darker colored grass now because we're we're closer to the to the well the foreground of the painting, and I just need to get canvas covered. Now we're still going to add a lot more detail later on, but right now we're just getting getting this this slightly different tint on. 
I've still got to be careful in this area to make sure I don't use my strokes to the point where I get the halo effect. So I do want to pull some of these strokes away. And um, the, the grass, though, in the front of the dog, the grass that kind of goes over the dog, is actually going to help that, that a lot. So I'm, 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 I'm notice, I notice it. I'm trying to make sure that I, I pay attention to that. But at the same time, I'm not overly concerned with it. Very important thing to remember in any painting is you want to be focused and you want to be um, you want to be focused, but yet you want to be relaxed about it. Don't 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 fret it. If something goes wrong, it's it, it is. I guess the whole theme of this video today is going to be that everything is fixable. Uh, most everything is fixable. Now, occasionally, you know, if you have a painting you started off and in the first session you go, "This is not working," or in good old Southern terms, "This just ain't working, folks." Uh, then, then maybe, then maybe it's time at that point to to scrub a painting and and wipe it off, you know, thin it down. But it's got to, you know, you can always sand one down and reuse the canvas. It's not a big deal. But uh, when we're this deep into it, everything just about's fixable. For the next few minutes, I'm just going to keep working on the the bottom half of this this painting just to make sure that I get to get the canvas covered. Uh, you're already starting to get a, a relatively strong sense of the colors, the final colors that are going to be in this thing, but it's still got a little bit of changing to do. It's not complete. I love, I love how happy this dog looks. It's, it's. Um, I don't have a title for it yet. You know, that's a great idea. While I'm working on this, you guys feel free drop something in the comments. Leave me what. What do you think this painting should be called? I'd love to know. I'd really love to know what this painting should be named. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick one of your, one of the names that you've you've put in the comments. But leave me a comment and let me know what uh, when this painting's done with. What do you think I should name it? Working now on the the just underneath the dog. Now this is I kind of started off here with a, the similar tone that I had on the outside, but later on I decided to darken it up a little bit. If you're painting with me though, and look, I'm going ahead and getting into the dog just a little bit, just to kind of break up this line. So I'm, I'm, I know what, I know where I'm going with it now. I know that, I know that the grass is going to come up over the front portion of his body, or the chest area, uh, and I've already covered up that leg a little bit too. See that, that, that front leg on the dog's right side, doing the same thing. in this little spot just getting the canvas covered constantly going back to the palette now I've thinned this paint down just a little bit if you're wondering what I kinda of gone over here for just a little I haven't done it too much but just a little now I'm gonna make sure that I get some 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 of his leg back here kinda of covered it's not gonna be as covered as the other in the front but it'll be still covered Obviously, I've got a pretty harsh line back there. That background leg that's really dark, the underneath part, I didn't take a lot of time. It, that's pretty much one solid color that I did in the first session of this painting. Uh, so I do want to get that broken up. and I'm going to go ahead and probably do that here in just a second, if I remember correctly. I'm darkening the color just slightly. Sticking with the same brush so far. I have not changed brushes. I will change here in just a little bit. So again, going with a slightly darker tone in some spots just to keep it random. As you can tell from the top of the painting to the bottom of the painting, there is a gradual darkening of color. But yet it's still random. See that top right corner's got a little bit of, of a of a stronger burnt sienna color. Down here near the bottom left, what I've done is tempered that with both um, ultramarine blue, cad red deep, and cad yellow deep. So it's still a lot of titanium white, but they've just been tempered a little bit differently.
All right, we're now into an area where the final final bits of of raw canvas. Well, it's really not even raw canvas because I, I again I put that tone the initial tone of sienna um, on the the on the primed canvas. So that's the great thing about toning. If you do miss a spot, you've already painted over it uh, because I, I put such a thin wash of sienna on it that the whole canvas was technically painted. Uh, so if I do miss like a little groove with 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 canvas, especially if you're using cotton, uh, like a a really hard tooth cotton that you would get at at a Hobby Lobby or a or a Michaels, um, you're going to end up with that with l little grooves that it's very difficult sometimes to get your paintbrush into, and to get paint down into. Uh, using this this fine linen uh, that I that I'm using again, I'm using a Masterpiece Pro canvas. This is a uh, Belgian a uh, vintage Belgian linen. Um, oil primed, so this is this one doesn't have as strong of a of a tooth as cotton uh, as a cheap cotton canvas would have. So it's not as hard for me. But if you're at home and you're you're painting this on another type canvas like a like a hard tooth cotton, a cheaper a cheaper canvas, um, you you would be much better served by toning because you would make sure that you got your entire thing covered first. Now just to cover the rest of this canvas, just keeping with my same up and down strokes, just making sure that I, I sort of indicate the grass. Uh, not in a detailed form yet, but of course almost no work I do <laughs> with impressionistic realism is, is that that terribly detailed. But, uh, well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm going a bit far with that statement because I guess the portrait in itself is pretty detailed. But... Yeah, you can tell it's not it's not absolute realism. I'm not trying to paint it like a photograph. Uh, I'm just indicating. I'm giving indications, and and I'm trying to to um, just reveal to the viewer or let the viewer reveal to themselves what I'm trying to portray uh, with these with these grass strokes. Okay, the whole canvas for the most part in about 30 minutes I covered, uh, taking just uh, took you know I took a little bit of time to, to make sure that I, I got my tones correct and uh, you know the more accurate I was with the initial layer, the less work I'm going to have to do later on. But it is for the most part covered. It is without a doubt not finished, so I've got to continue on. doing a few little touch-ups of color here and there where I, I think it may need it. Blending a bit near the top. Sitting back, I'm gonna get up, take a look at it. Pretty pleased with it so far. At this point, I've got a good idea of what I'm working with. Like I, I've, I, can see, I can start to see a finished product right now. And we're closer done than you than you would think. This is this is this thing came a lot quicker. I actually don't think at this point I don't think I'm gonna have to have a third session. So this is this is awesome.
detailing of the grass. Now this is this may look intimidating in some ways, but this is a very simple thing to do. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts of this painting is going to be doing the grass. So I'm I'm going to use basically two different colors uh, to to do the detailing. Of course, I'm going to I'm going to do random mixtures of both of those colors every time I go back to my palette. But the first one's going to be a dark, uh, and I'm just taking um, more of a, a firm bristle brush and just laying in some initial twig shapes. Uh, and I'm I'm being a bit more cautious with my stroke now. You can tell I'm not being super quick with it. Uh, and these are still kind of in the background, these that I'm doing, but they're, they're still, they're still going to, they're going to end up affecting the, 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 the super detailed portion of this painting. I'm going to darken this corner a little bit as well with the same color. So I'm going to turn my brush and I'm just manipulating how I turn my brush. You know, if I want to get a really fine line, I'll turn it I'll turn it uh, parallel, or, or, or I'll turn it vertical uh, to the edge uh, of the canvas. Um, and then if I want to cover a lot of canvas, I'll just turn it to its flat side and, and you know, bear down on it a little bit more. Until I'm constantly looking at my, at my reference material. This this is a point where you might get frustrated. You might think it's not happening, not looking exactly correct. But there's a lot more to put in. So just hang in there with me, and it'll it'll come together. I'm putting my initial strokes over the dog. Now these there, I'm gonna have a lot more over the dog, but uh, he, this starts to kind of set him down, to kind of settle him into the into the scene. Uh, up until this point, he's been kind of a floater. He's just kind of been a, a little bit of a ghostly apparition, kind of hanging over the grass. Well, now, now he's becoming reality. He's sitting, sitting in it, or standing in that grass. I talk about challenging yourself uh, at times. We're about to challenge challenge you right now. It's time to put a start putting some large, large grass uh, blades in. And this is really kind of a hay field, I guess. It's not not technically. It's, this is not green grass like you would think of of grass. This is this is out in the country. This 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 little fella or this big fella. He's he's out just having a fun time with his master today, and um, but he's he's out in a pretty deep deep hay field. My main point with that is, is you folks at home that. That we're not we're not painting Saint Augustine grass here. This is this is a little different. This is uh, kind of this this fall scene. A lot of fall colors. But this type of a painting with these colors can go in any room. I'm telling you, and it can go with almost any frame. That's the awesome part of this. With these really earthy tones, you can go with a gold frame. You know, a beautiful you know brown or walnut color frame would go really well with it. Uh, but but other than that, it could also go in almost any room. It could it could go in a, in um, you know you might not want to put it in a I guess in a contemporary uh, modern home if you had really really you know strong lines within your home if you had a uh, really modern a modern staircase or something like that it might not be the perfect painting for that but you know even that could depend on how you frame it you could use a you could use a floater frame and and. Um, that would that would kind of contemporize this a little bit. I don't know if that's a word. Contemporize. Someone can leave me a comment and let me know if I'm wrong about that. <laughs> but but um, I would say this this kind of type of painting is going to fit in about eighty percent of homes in the United States. Maybe ninety percent. I I don't have any data to back that up. But I just the people that I live around uh, in South Arkansas, the people that I've been around in Colorado, this painting would go awesome. In, in most of their homes.
really from this point on, everything I'm doing is is just centered around uh, random um, changes in color from dark to light and putting in these detailed strokes. So I step away from the painting for just a quick second, uh, take a, a step back, want to take a look at it, try to try to get a better feel for for where I am at this point. Uh, obviously, it's starting to look like like a like a a finished painting, but it's not done. It's it's still far from done. I, I still have a lot of detailing to do in in the in the grass blades, and I'm probably going to touch up the dog a little bit as well, um, as I talked about because I did get into his ear a little bit. Uh, and there's a couple of other areas I want to touch up within the dog itself. That can all be done now because the dog is dry. I do. I, I don't think I've mentioned that to this point, but the dog is dry. I've waited around um, uh, three three days or so before I I really started trying to determine whether or not the dog was finished. Of course, this, that dog had a lot of titanium white in him, so that didn't dry as, as quick as the darker colors. Uh, but but it is the the dog is 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 set at this point. It's it's fully tacked. And uh, when I say fully tacked, what I mean is it it could I could run a brush over it without pulling paint. So uh, that's it's it's set up. It's 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 hardened and the dog's dry. So I can I can paint over him now without losing any anything and without picking up any color. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to pick up any titanium white in any of my my grass blades that I that I have coming up. So for the next little bit, uh, just I'm, I'm actually going to be quiet now because there's not a ton of information for me to give you other than I'm just going to do a lot more of the same. I've been working with dark colors to this point. Uh, I do I will switch to a very a bright color here in a few minutes. And this bright color is a mixture of titanium white, uh, burnt sienna, um, cad red deep, and cad yellow deep uh, with very, very slight... Um, amounts of those last two of the red and the yellow I just I wanted to create a, a bit of an orange tint to this but it's 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 kind of like working with clouds you, you want you want to have an orange tint to it or a yellow tint to it but you certainly don't want to overpower it with those colors you just you want to get a nice bright color uh, a very sunny color and and that's the simplest way to do it I've officially switched to this this brighter color, and I'm just going to kind of give the indications of a bit of uh, graininess towards the end of these stalks. Uh, even keep in mind that even the the dark stalks that I've already put in, the bottom or the tops of those dark stalks could have light uh, because it's this, it's the same it's the same grass. It's simply that that light is getting to them. Uh, and that's what changes the the color from that dark brown to this lighter this lighter sunny color. Um, so anything near the front might have a lot of light in it. Uh, anything that that could be getting a little bit of a shadow cast on it could be that darker color. So don't be afraid to kind of start with a dark color near the bottom and move up to a lighter color near the top, or even vice versa.
All right, now I'm going to be quiet for a few minutes. I just want you guys to just watch as I kind of transform over the next few minutes and put even more detail into this, this foreground grass. I don't want to overcomplicate it by talking over it, so just, just watch as this happens. It's a combination of a couple of colors. Just sit back and enjoy the process.
I'm about to put in some bright grass blades right over the dog. Now don't be afraid to go high on this dog like I am near this ear, but but keep in mind that you do want to keep your line relatively thin, and you also don't want it straight up and down. This this grass is being blown by the wind. It's 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 wild, so don't don't get it perfectly up um, parallel to the to the side of the canvas. Uh, notice I'm not painting a a just I'm not pull, putting my brush down and then pulling down. I'm almost kind of going back and forth just to get this really thin line uh, on these grass blades. It's a technique that that. For some, may be difficult to, to master, but, you, but you'll eventually get there.
Okay, for the most part, the grass is is where it's going to to find its finishing place. Uh, but I do need to go back and touch up touch up this dog a little bit. Uh, obviously, I've got to work on that um, on that tail, uh, which is what I'm about to to kind of tackle. I also want to give him a little bit more sunlight, and you'll see what I mean by that here in just a, a few minutes. But uh, first thing I'm going to do is kind of mix up a little bit of the white, uh, and I actually got this color initially to blue. I uh, did add a little bit of ultramarine blue to it uh, just to kind of warm him up but and set him apart. But right in here, I had I had some lingering blue within my within this brush and it actually didn't look that bad on camera, but up close it looked pretty pretty rough. So I had to go back in and 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 clean my brush, make sure I got all the blue out of it and then and then rework that area. It wasn't the end of the world again, but I, I could I, I could tell it, so I had to I had to make it right. Here I'm going back in with a clean brush. I'm actually using a little bit stronger white. And there's no problem with this at this point in the painting. Normally I would advise against using a bright, bright white. And even this white is not perfect titanium white out of the, out of the, out of the, uh, the tube. I've mixed it with some other, other colors like the cad yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna. Uh, so I'm getting a, a little hint of warmth within this white, but it's still very bright. The reason, though, that it's okay to use it at this point is we're we're in the detailing stage of the painting. We're in the the very the very end. This thing's close to being done. So at this at this area at this juncture, um, it's okay to brighten him up with a little bit of sunlight. Uh, the sun's bearing down. That tail's got some thin hair in it. Um, he's he's probably it's probably pretty bright white. Also here on the nose. I've got to be careful with this. I don't want to overdo it, but I want just a little bit of sunlight just, just kind of shimmering off of the white part of his nose, this snout area. See, I didn't overpower it with that with that white on the nose, but I, I am seeing another little place where a little bit of light shimmering off of off of the fur could lend really well to creating some some serious depth within this this painting and within this dog. Uh, see, I'm kind of turning my head. You guys can see me in the window there to the left. I also want you to notice I've got paint splatters all over my room. Uh, I am a I guess I am a messy painter. Uh, that's probably from years ago though, from when I was I've been painting in this room for a long time and. Uh, I was a pretty messy painter and even fiddled around with some modern art, uh, which involved splashing paint and all kinds of weird stuff. But uh, I think this ear, this edge of this ear needs a, needs a little bit of bright white. I just think it could really create depth, set him apart, which is what we want to do. We want him to be the focal point. So as I paint this in, I'm using a liner brush now just to make sure that I stay pretty pretty firm with this thing. Man, I love that. Oh, it looks so good. He just all of a sudden, he pops now. That's a pop. That little bit on the nose and that little bit on the ear really, really hammers home this painting. I, I love it.
probably the most difficult part of this painting is is this open part of the the mouth, kind of the slobbery area. Uh, and so I let that dry. I wanted to make sure that that area was dry before I did any more work on it because in session one, if I did much more to that mouth, it was just going to become a muddy mess. And it's and it's not going to become a muddy mess at this point because I'm 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 now painting on top of dry paint, but it's not going to make it any easier to, to get the detail of it right. So I'm just looking at, at my reference material and trying to determine where the little blocks of color are and those slight color variations. Now this was a hard color to nail for me. I don't know what it was, but this little pinkish color, this dark pink, was just, it was difficult to hit. Uh, it probably shouldn't have been, but I was, this is late in the painting process and, um, you know, we, we tend to get in a hurry towards the end and I got this color a little bit too gray uh, initially, but I'm still using my liner brush, just trying to touch it up some. And I'm not going to lie to you guys at home. I don't know that I don't know that I was 100% satisfied with this area of the painting, even when it was completed. But every painting has an area like that, uh, and if we if we can you know, we could just you know beat it to death and try to try to you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, try to get something right. But it, you know, that's just going to end up building up paint layers, which are going to make it look odd. So uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't fiddle around with, with art like that. I, I like to, I like to move on. You know, if, if I haven't gotten it within, within two or three weeks, um, I need to move on and try to hone my skills on another, on another painting. Uh, at this point though, even that little area, even though I'm not, 100% satisfied with it it's still very good and I like it it's I, I do like it I'm not saying I don't like the, the painting I'm just I wish there was little spots that that I wish I could just nail that little bit more and that's that's dangerous when you start to think like that as an artist when you think oh I can make that just a little bit better well those I could go over every square inch of this painting and go well, that could be better that could be better well the whole thing could be better but I'm not trying to create perfection here. I'm trying to create a piece of art and and an and, and, and original piece of art. So this is mine. This doesn't belong to anyone else. It's my hands that created this. And if it looks good, it's okay. So to me, it looks good. And as I finish up the last little bits of this mouth, the little touch-ups that I make, I think it did it did make it better. Uh, so and to and to me, again, I ask myself that simple question: Does it look good to Rob? And it did. It looked good to me. Over the last uh, few minutes here of this painting, I just I just want to, as as I'm kind of finishing up some little little bits of detailing, I do want to uh, remind you guys, please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed my content here tonight. Um, if if you would like to um, see see more of my work, please not only subscribe but hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever uh, I upload new content. Also, leave me a comment. Um, you know. My work is not absolute perfection, so if you see something that you think I could do a little bit differently, let me know. Hey, I'm I'm always open to new stuff. Um, I uh, of course, if you if you got a comment that's just hey Rob, I like this painting, please feel free to leave that as well. Any comment in the world that you have, more than open to hear it. Love for you to leave it in the comment section of this video. 
Uh, and just um, enjoy the last few minutes of this pa- piece as I um, as I work on finishing up this this painting. Uh, I do I, I didn't sign the signature uh, simply because I want to let this this grass dry before I sign my signature to this. So that's not a, a big big deal for me. But I just want to let you guys know that normally that is something I would do at the end of a painting. Uh, but for this video, uh, we're going to call this the end of session two. And this is actually going to be the end of the painting uh, as I finish up these last few brush strokes. I've only got a few minutes left, and um, this is this is pretty much the finished product. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just keep watching, and I'll um, chime back in here towards the end of end of this painting. Oftentimes, after looking at a painting for a few minutes, we, or even after about an hour or so, when we come back to it, we see things that aren't quite right. I forgot to put whiskers, so I did decide to go back and put on some whiskers. Um, I'm using titanium white, uh, almost a bright white, but it's basically the same color I used on the, the bright part of the tail. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not painting in direct, strong lines. I'm, I'm pa- painting very broken lines. And I'm just giving the impression of whiskers there. I'm not, I'm definitely, it's almost like painting a a, um, a barbed wire fence. You paint very broken lines to, to do that. You don't need to draw it in uh, perfectly. Uh, otherwise, it's going to look really odd. 
I also think that his eye is going to need a little bit of work, so I'm going to work on that here in just a few moments. I need to extend the, the upper portion of his eyelid. It's not quite dark enough. But then also there's a little bit of light shimmering off of his eye that I need to, I need to change the tone. I didn't get the tone quite right on the initial uh, painting in session one. I also have to fix this tail. Remember, I, I painted over that just a little bit, so I'm just going to go back to my number three um, uh, uh, Da Vinci Maestro bristle brush. I believe this is a bright that I'm using. And I'm just going to take my dark color and just kind of paint over this little area of the tail that I accidentally painted into uh, earlier in the process. Now, I actually like the little bit of white that's showing through here uh, from where I did paint over that because it's going to lend it it's going to lend a little bit of a highlight to the top part of this dark uh, area of the tail. But see, now that looks right. The shape's correct. It's, it's, it's pretty spot on. I did want to go back over one other area here. That just kind of strengthens that, that tail up a little bit more. Again, that li there's a little hint of a tonal change between the bottom of that, that dark part of the tail and the top. That's perfectly fine, though. It looks like it's being hit by sunlight just a little bit. I'm painting a little bit darker area back there. So, yeah, that tail's, that tail's back to its, its, its normal, normal state. <laughs> And for this last little bit, I'm just going to work on this eye a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit stronger, so I'm just pulling out the eyelid, or the little interior crescent of the eye, just a little bit more with a, with a dark tone. Using a liner brush, obviously, because that's pretty fine detail. I am an impressionistic realism painter, but in a situation like that on that eye, you've got to be pretty pretty direct with it. You don't want a big broad stroke there, you'll get yourself into trouble. I 
Also needed a little bit of that brighter tone that I talked about. And I had to be careful mixing up this color because I didn't want to overpower anything uh, and make it look too weird. So I did tone this white down some. But I'm just going to create a little sunlight in the crescent area of the, the eye, uh, the little cup area of the eye where the, the dog's eye resides within the skull. And that's going to create more depth within the dog. We're always thinking about shapes and what, what looks right. Going to have to have a little bit more here as well. Okay, that's going to do it for this painting for the most part. It's all finished up. Um, hope you enjoyed this. I will see you next time here on um, Rob Reap Art here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me. Please consider subscribing. Have a great day and keep painting. God bless.